I've been playing around with the solar power for a while, but only now did I get my, my inverters back. So now I can actually show something that I've seen. We have a little 30 watt solar panel running, charging up this double Nissan Leaf battery pack to 16 and a half volts, which works a little better for the inverters, honestly. This is on. And now look at this. We'll go to cool mode, go down a little low, the reason why I'm doing this is because we're going to be taking this out since it's now fall. And remember, this is a tiny 410 watt inverter, teeny tiny little thing. Okay, it's kicking on. Look at that. So, I actually kind of agonized over this quite a bit because when we were, we were having to buy an air conditioner, there was a bunch of different air conditioners. As the popular science magazine from June 1974 says, in these days of power shortages, it's essential that your central air conditioner be efficient. I agree. Back then, the height of efficiency was a C rating of 9.8 and the average had a 7.2. Nowadays, it doesn't seem like things have really progressed that much because you have a lot of air conditioners that are like a C rating of 11 or 12 at Home Depot or Lowe's. But all of a sudden there was this one, this one that had 15. It's like, wait a minute, 15, really? Well, it turns out one of the aspects of why it's so efficient is the DC inverter. So it doesn't have that huge inrush current and it can gracefully turn on, which means that you can power it off of a tiny inverter just like that. It's not gonna have this big inrush current that'll trip even a big, in, a big inverter. And so, you know, I didn't even realize that when I got it, but then I, we were using it and I realized it turned on so gracefully. There's no like, it just, it turns on so gracefully. And then I put a power meter on it and I realized that even in the, in the summer, during the most heat, it only pulled like 380 watts, which is amazing. You know, it'll go up and down. It'll go up to 350 and then go down and such. But this was more than enough to cool our entire 600 square foot apartment. So the other reason why this one is, oh, that poor little inverter. This one's a little bit old, about 10, 10 years old. Oh shoot, I just realized why it died. This is totally my fault. I stole the fuse from it, so it was, meant to run at 50 amps and of course it popped at 25 amps well there i go ruining my video but <sighs> yeah so let's uh let's just pretend like i didn't steal that fuse and it's still running because um yesterday i was tinkering with a lot of stuff and i popped the fuse on a different inverter and uh boy that's embarrassing let's just pretend that's still running because it would run fine if i hadn't stolen that fuse so the other reason why this runs really efficiently, besides the inverter, is because it runs on a new refrigerant, R32. So R32 difluoromethane was a component of R410A and R22, I believe. But finally, they're able to use it just by itself. It is really efficient, a lot more efficient, but it, I think it has like a, it's hotter on the hot side. And so that had issues of wearing down the oil and cooking the oil and then also because it's a little more flammable it was like it was harder on the factory side of things it's, it's not dangerous here like the old r12 stuff and the r22 if i remember right were a little flammable about the same actually and like on the user side it's not difficult but whenever you're running a factory if you're if your refrigerant a little more flammable i'm sure that causes a lot more safety permit issues so they went with r410a and so it seems like we're actually getting a lot of progress in this regard because, you know, the old refrigerants worked really well, but they also worked really well at destroying the environment. And so then we had to compromise and make R22 and then we made R410A and they just didn't quite work as well. But now they're finally finding refrigerants that are less of a compromise because, you know, they never wanted to destroy the environment. They, they picked it because it was good at refrigerating and then they had to move away from that. And only now are we finally finding ways to use refrigerants that are actually getting back to and even surpassing the efficiency of other refrigerants. 
you know, it's only a matter of time whenever we're going to find an even better one and, and things are going to be going so well. So the actual ramifications of this was during, we had a pretty hot summer, and during that heat wave, we ran that thing constantly. It was pulling, we had it a little higher setting than medium there, uh, small, uh, low there. We had like medium and max a few times, and it pulled uh, something like 480 watts. That's why I don't want to run the full on that 410 watt inverter, because it would be better to have it on this, because I'm sure the efficiency tanks a little bit, pulling closer to the 400 watts on that. But it only cost us $17 a month in electricity, which is actually really good for the, the peak of summer. And then after that, we've, we've been, we, we used it for a few months and, you know, we were a little bit naughty and we splurged a bit and we, we had to go down to like 74 degrees at night. And it was really nice in the summer because, oh, it's so nice whenever you actually have an air conditioner that works. And then at night, it's like, I want it to be nice and cool. And we would close the door to our bedroom so we wouldn't be wasting power in the rest of the apartment. And we'd kind of splurge a little bit. And even then, our power bill was only like $40 in that month. And it probably only cost us about $10 because now our power bill is about $30. And that's without any air conditioner. So it cost us about $10 with us even kind of wasting a bit of energy. So... It really seems like these new types of air conditioners are, it's like a, a silent change. And a lot of people don't realize it. I didn't even know these existed. I didn't know about this. I, I didn't even think that it would run so easily on an inverter that if I remember to not take the fuses out of it. And I've really been enjoying these air conditioners a lot and it changes everything. Like you could have a running off a single car battery. Uh, this, these two Nissan Leaf battery packs that I have, those two battery packs, the, you could probably get those on eBay for like um, $50 each if you, if you really hunt around for a deal. And those two battery packs could run that air conditioner at medium for four hours. That's not that bad. Especially if you have like a 200 watt solar panel also going with it that's really gonna that's gonna extend that through the heat of the day and then get you some in the evening so man it used to be that you'd have to have an inverter that was like 4,000 watts or you'd have to modify your air conditioner to start up slowly because that inrush current will just kill your inverter it'll just trip out the circuit breaker or pop the fuse if you if you don't remember to put the fuses in if you remember to put the fuses in <laughs> and I, i'll i'm I'm probably gonna probably put a uh, a circuit breaker on that inverter because I keep doing experiments with stuff and I keep popping these fuses and I keep pulling them out of stuff and then I need them to work and I forget that I pulled the fuses out of them. So I'm gonna see if I can find some small DC circuit breakers so I can stop having this embarrassment. Well, that's pretty much it. Today we were gonna take this air conditioner out and I plan to make a big video about this tomorrow for a whole Solar Sunday series about air conditioners and whatnot. Maybe check some local stores, see if these have popped up more. But I thought I'd just make a quick video in case any of you are going to be buying an air conditioner now that like it's probably better deals or better prices in winter, preparing for next year in the, in the heat. And uh, I hope you guys can get some ideas about good ways to utilize this new technology, which opens up a lot of possibilities. With that 30 watt solar panel, I could run this thing for a few hours a week actually. And with a 100 watt solar panel, I could run it for maybe an hour a day, two hours a day. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you very much for watching. See ya. Wow, did you hear my arm pop? Ow, that hurt. Just a part of getting older, I guess. Just things pop and crackle when you move them. <laughs>